Hello fellow Movie Crusaders, welcome to today's episode of Sean's Movie Crusades. My name is Sean Wasserkrug, and today we're reviewing the latest Ryan Johnson film, Knives Out. Uh, now for me, uh, personally, I know Ryan Johnson has been getting a lot of shit since he did directed Last Jedi, but I, I'm one of the few people that didn't hate Last Jedi. I actually enjoyed it. Yes, it has its problems. Yes, there are things in that film that uh, he should not have done, and you definitely will hear about that when the movie Crusaders ride through the Star Wars Galaxy, uh, Episode 8, which will be all about The Last Jedi. Um, but he's done great films outside of that. He's done Brick, he's done Looper. Um, I've heard great things about Brothers Bloom, but I personally have never seen it. So when I saw the trailer for Knives Out, uh, <clears throat> I was actually very excited for it. First off, the cast is... An amazing cast. Like, everyone in this film are all standout um, actors and actresses who are great at their craft. Uh, the movie looks visually great, and who doesn't love a whodunit kind of film? I mean, look back to at to Clue, um, Murder on the Orient Express, or any, like, Agatha Christie novel slash film. A whodunit mystery, uh, murder mystery, especially when it's like a an, an inspector P.I., who has to interview a bunch of people, and everyone's kind of has the ability to have done the deed, and then him having to figure it out, and you trying to go along with it, definitely makes it a lot more of a, an enjoyable experience for everyone watching it, because you get to play along as the movie plays out. Um, but it just it, it's definitely a, a, a fun overall experience, and with this cast, and with Ryan Johnson's uh, screenplay, because he wrote this, and I... Um, it definitely made it a very interesting aspect. Plus, the reviews coming out of this beforehand have been very, very stellar. So I was very excited going into seeing this. So let's go ahead and jump into the review and see exactly what I thought of Knives Out. The actual plot to Knives Out is um, basically a acclaimed mystery, murder mystery writer, um, uh, Harlan uh, Thromblay, Thromblay, Thromby, Thromby, sorry, Thromby, uh, is celebrating his 85th birthday with all of his family and friends around. But when his um, his housekeeper, Fran, uh, goes to deliver him breakfast in the morning, she finds his throat slit uh, in his office attic. We then jump ahead a week later where the police are gathering all of the family and um, a couple of non-family uh, members, mainly the uh, nurse... Um, back to the house to be questioned once again. Um, thus, someone new to the mix is there, and that is Daniel Craig's um, uh, Benoit Blanc, uh, who's there to be... Hi he was hired by a mysterious, anonymous um, donor to try and solve this case. Uh, and... Um, Basically, he goes through the interrogations with everyone, everyone who's a family member, whether it be actual family of um, Harlan or, you know, related through marriage or stuff like that. Um, you know, because you got, you got you know, daughters-in-law, son-in-laws, children of those uh, daughters, um, you know, husbands. I mean, you got, you got a whole big course of this family. Uh, and then, of course, the nurse played by Ana de Armas, who has a very unique disability. Uh, which uh, Benoit Blanc uses that unique um, uh, disorder uh, to basically help him try and solve the true mystery of what happened to Harlan Thrombe. And that is the basic plot of Knives Out. Now, what works with Knives Out? I mean, the, the writing for this is spectacular. The one thing that Ryan Johnson is great at, and you can't, you can't knock him for is that he's able to write a hell of a script. The dialogue's strong. Um, it, it it throws you down a weaving path. He he keeps you on the edge of your uh, on the edge of your seat throughout the whole film, and he does it mainly because he's got a phenomenal cast behind him. Uh, Anna Anna D. Amars Amars. Um, many people might know her from Bla uh, Blade Runner twenty forty nine, which was she was one of the bright spots of that film for me when I watched it. She. It, this is her coming out party. Whereas, like, she was kind of like, oh, I liked her in this movie. Maybe we'll see her in something someday. She is the focal point of this film. It is mainly her and Daniel Craig kind of going through playing a chess game of trying to figure out uh, the murder or potential suicide 
of, of Harlan, um, and uh, she knocks this out of the park. She this is her this is her coming out role, um, and I think Anna does a phenomenal job playing Marta. Her her name's uh, Marta Cabrera. Um, she she's a very trustworthy friend of Harlan. Um, she's a nurse, but she more or less was hired to basically, you know, be a friend to Harlan. Um, and, uh, she's one of the few people that, out of the entire family, that actually is mourned and sad by the death of Harlan and wants to find out who actually murdered him. Or, if someone had murdered him, uh, because, you know, it's, it's warranted a suicide at first. Um, and she's, she's, she's very, very likable character. Um, she's the one character in the movie that literally is not an asshole, uh, because his entire family are a bunch of assholes. And, uh, you know, Daniel Craig chews the scenery up in this role. He's got a great, like, kind of southern drawl, foghorn, leghorn, well, I do declare that this is going to be a mystery and all this kind of stuff. He talks like that the whole way through, which at first you're like, I don't know if this is going to work, but by the end of it, you'll love it. Um, we saw this with him not necessarily doing this voice, but we saw him doing a southern accent in Logan Lucky. Um, a lot of people only know him as James Bond. A lot of people don't know Daniel Craig and a lot of other things because he did a lot of indie stuff and not, not a lot of stuff that really, uh, for the mainstream audience, know him as besides, obviously, James Bond. And I think this movie shows, just like it did in Logan Lucky, which, once again, another movie that a lot of people probably didn't see because it was more indie than mainstream, this is Daniel Craig kind of showing, hey... I'm more than James Bond. I'm a fantastic actor. Notice me for more than just being James Bond. And with him having his last James Bond film coming out here in the next year or two, uh, this opens up the doors for him to do a lot more things. And this character, Benoit Blanc, um, I would love for them to continue with this character. Uh, kind of like an Agatha Christie kind of character. Keep going with this Benoit Blanc character, because... I love Daniel Craig who play, in playing in this role. He's he's one of my favorite performances of the year, as, along with uh, Ana de Armas, Armas as uh, Marta. Um, but you could do so much more with Benoit Blanc outside of this film, have him go on more mystery murders and stuff like that. You can make this a series about Benoit Blanc uh, going off and doing certain things. I, I hope and wish that they do do that. And not just let this be a one-time showing of Daniel Craig that we get here. Because he's fantastic in the film. As well as Ana de Armas. Um, also, like I said, re the rest of the cast is amazing too. Chris Evans. Probably one of the first roles in a long time we've seen him in that's not Captain America. He, the, the main thing is everyone in this film seems to be having a blast. Chris Evans is having the most fun. He's, <laughs> he's, the, he's the black sheep of the family. And he relishes in being that. Uh, um, he loves torturing this family and pushing their buttons. And when he can turn everyone against each other, to him, that's more enjoyable than money. But obviously he still wants money. But Chris Evans has a blast in this role, you can tell. Um, and uh, he's one of the highlights of the film as well. You also got Jamie Lee Curtis, who plays um, Linda, which is Harlan's daughter. Um, Michael Shannon, who plays the son, Walt. Uh, Don Johnson, who plays Richard, Linda's husband. Tony Collette plays Joni, who was married to one of Harlan's sons, who has been passed away. So she's kind of the surrogate daughter to Harlan. Um, but Keith Stanfield, he plays one of the, the lieutenants who's helping, uh, Benoit Blanc with the case. Um, Catherine Langford plays Meg, who's the daughter of Joni. Uh, Jaden Martell, who's from the It films, he plays, uh, Jacob, uh, he's the daughter, or he's the son of, um, Walt and his wife, Donna, played by Ricky Lindholm. Uh, you got, um, Frank Oz, he pops in as the, uh, the attorney who reads the will for Harlan. And then, of course, Harlan, the, uh, amazing Christopher Plummer, um... Catherine Langford from 13 Reasons Why. She plays the daughter of Joni. I think I just, I think I said that already. Um, I'm trying to think of anyone else who I left out. Um, yes, there's one I left out. I actually really, really enjoyed him. I gotta look his name because he's not on the main cast list, which sucks because he's in the movie quite a bit. Um, Noah, Noah Segan. He plays Trooper Wagner. He's the other uh, cop or, or law enforcement that's helping 
um, Lakeith Stanfield and, and Daniel Craig's characters to try to solve the case. He is hilarious in this film. He's the, he's the one cop that's like a fan of Harlan's work and uh, Benoit Blanc, and he feels like he's in his own murder mystery as well. And he's that character who's kind of the, the, the audience where he's just in this thing, and he's having a blast doing it, and he brings a lot of a laughter to the to the audience in the theater who is watching it. Um, everyone in this movie that I mentioned have have moments to to shine outside of maybe like one person in particular, which we'll get to. Um, that they all have great moments; they're all fun to watch. They all play horrible people, which makes it even more enjoyable to watch. Um, in general, uh, but yeah, it, the cast is great, the writing is great, Ryan Johnson also visually shoots this very beautiful, there are, there are rooms in this mansion, um, that have a lot of stimulating things for your eyes to feast on, weird, weird statues, weird paintings, just weird crap all over the place that you can literally look for hours in one room and just find new stuff, and um, obviously the iconic shot of the movie is definitely the, the backdrop of this, of, of one of his rooms, which has a thousand knives, because I guess one of his books is called A Thousand Knives, and, um, that's the iconic shot of the film, or is, is the visual of everyone being interviewed in front of these thousand knives, and, uh, it, it's, like, it's visually stimulating, the movie keeps, uh, at a steady pace throughout, you're in it the entire time, and even at a certain point when you think you have it figured out, you don't. Uh, and when we finally get the big reveal or the who done it at the end of the film, um, like I said, it leaves you guessing the whole way through. And when it's actually unraveled to you, it there's no shortcut going. I don't, I don't fall in. Like that's not the other big problem with who done it. It's like when they finally go, it was the butler, and it's like no, it couldn't be the butler because of this, 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 and this. Clearly, you didn't think about this all the way through. With this one, um, there, I, I, everything that they were bringing up to, to connect the dots makes logical sense, makes total points, and there was never any, no, that, that doesn't work in this film. So Ryan Johnson definitely did a fantastic job directing this and writing this story. Uh, he had a great cast around him. Like I said, a lot works it with Knives Out. It's definitely one of the better films of the year with a phenomenal cast throughout the film. Now, what does not work with Knives Out, uh, there's not a lot that doesn't work. Um, I will say, if there is a actor who really gets underutilized, um, now, albeit his character, I really don't know really a whole lot what they could have done with the character, but they could have done more than just his character being this the whole way, because literally his character is basically just doing this, and that is uh, Jaden Martell, who plays uh, Jacob. Um, the son of, uh, uh, the son of, um, Walt and Donna, they, they constantly poke at him that he's, he's a right alt, like, Nazi kind of character, because, I mean, that's one thing that I also wasn't necessarily a big fan of, is that there's, there's a lot of political undertones about today's political society, um, they, there's one particular scene where they're clearly talking about Trump without actually saying Trump's name, um, and, and, uh, the Jacob character is a very, very big, supporter of that stuff so constantly he's being called a nazi and a right alt and all this stuff um th so there's there's back and forth with that which to me really doesn't work i mean for i'm not gonna necessarily dock it for that but it just it's not my kind of humor and it's not my kind of uh enjoyment of a film that i'm watching but he's definitely a character that really is given nothing to do except look at his phone the entire time he gets some lines when he does get to talk it is decent but it's just he's um, he's just really not given much to do, unlike everyone else in the film. Now, with a cast this large and a cast this amazing, um, and the characters of them being great, yes, we I would love to have had more sh scenes with all of this cast. But the main story does follow uh, Marta and Benoit Blanc, so the rest of the family, while they're a huge focal point in the beginning of the film. Towards the middle and end of the film, they do kind of fall to the wayside because they're not the central story anymore. The central story is the the mystery, and um, that you can look at as a negative because, like I said, like uh, Don Johnson, Jimmy Lee Curtis, um, Chris Evans, uh, Michael Shannon, all Tony Collette, um, all fantastic characters. You just kind of wanted to see more 
of what we got, but they were great in what we got. You just wanted a little bit more, but I get what Ryan Johnson was doing. Um, he uses them sparringly, but when he does use them, it's fantastic. We just wanted more. Uh, the only other knock I could give it is that when they're towards the end of the second half, like second half to the start of the third act of the film, they do leave the mansion uh, and kind of go around town. And I do feel like the movie does kind of stall a little bit during that time until they get back to the mansion for the final act. So I'm not saying that when they're in that, when they're not at the mansion, the movie's not good, because it is. It's still a very good movie, but if there is a moment of the film where it does start to lose a little bit of its steam, it is when they leave the mansion and they're out in the town doing what I can't say because of spoilers. So, like I said, those are the only really things that do really don't work with the film. So going into overall thoughts... Knives Out is a fantastic film this year. Like I said, great direction by Ryan Johnson, great screenplay, the music's great, the visuals are great, the cast is fantastic, the dialogue's great. It leaves you guessing all the way through the film, even though when you think you have it figured out, you don't. Um, like I said, the entire cast I already mentioned are great in this film, led by Daniel Craig and Ana de Armas. Um, like I said, one of my favorite films of the year. So going to my score... Um, I'm actually going to give Knives Out a 9.4 out of 10, which does have it break in to the top 10 of 2019 so far. So going to the list, Avengers Endgame is still going to be at the number one spot, followed by Jojo Rabbit uh, with Ford v. Ferrari at number three, Joker at four, A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood at number five, Parasite at number six with Knives Out coming in at the number seven spot, Toy Story 4 at eight, Rocket Man at nine with Doctor Sleep, Rounding out the top 10 with Peter Butter Falcon dropping out. I did not see that one dropping out of my top 10, but uh, sadly it did. Crazy thing about what's going on right now, there are so many good movies that are out right now. If you look at my top 10 list, only two, or no, only three movies in my current top 10 right now are not movies that have come out in the last month, month and a half. Now, by the time we get to the end of the year list and the final rankings... I'm probably going to have to reshuffle and relook at all this stuff and come up with a whole brand new list. But as are we are right now, seven out of the top ten are movies that have been released within the last uh, month, two months. Basically October. Um, and there's still so many fantastic films that have yet to come out. So this list is definitely going to get shuffled. There are movies that are on this list that are not going to make it through the top ten. Um, I can't wait to see what happens. And we got a big one coming up in a few days which is going to be the next review that we're going to see popped up, which is The Irishman. Um, people are talking about it as being the best film of the year. We'll find out. Uh, we'll have that review popping up this weekend. And then, of course, uh, continuing with the Movie Crusaders ride through the Star Wars galaxy. We've, we're two episodes down. The third one uh, with Revenge of the Sith. All i got to say is this. It's a very long episode, but it is worth the journey. It is hilarious. Uh, me and uh, my three co my co-hosts of Kirk Kowalski, uh, Jay Burns, and Doug uh, Douglas Cassell, um, we lose it multiple times with with jokes. It's funny, it's laughter, and we do some great talking about Star Wars: Revenge of the Sith. It's a longer video. I get that. Um, watch it in parts. Do whatever, but most importantly. Definitely watch it. You guys are going to have a blast watching it from beginning to end. We put a lot of effort into these videos, and I hope you guys are checking those out, as well as all the other videos that I do on Sean's Movie Crusades and with the actual Crusaders themselves. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed this review. If you guys did, go ahead and hit that like button. If you guys feel like this review is worth sharing, go ahead and hit that share button. But most importantly, don't forget to hit that subscribe button to the channel so that way you guys stay up to date with all the latest videos that pop up on Sean's Movie Crusades. And of course, don't forget to follow us on all the social media outlets you see below. Uh, so like I said, next review, we got The Irishman coming up, and then of course tomorrow, um, be on the lookout for The Movie Crusaders Ride Through the Star Wars Galaxy, Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith. And until next time, in case I don't see you, good morning, good afternoon, and good night, Movie Crusaders.